Polk, this is Mr. McDermott, and today we're going to be answering three things. What are valence electrons? How do we determine uh, how many valence electrons an atom has? And then we're going to show valence electrons using the Lewis dot diagrams. So, the first question, what are valence electrons? We're going to define valence electrons as outer electrons. And we're gonna say they're the ones that are gonna be involved with bonding, right? They're the ones that are bonding. Inner electrons aren't usually involved with the bonding with other atoms. So they're involved with bonding. So these are electrons in the outer part of the, uh, of the atom that are going to be exchanged or shared with other uh, atoms. So next we have to determine how many valence electrons an atom will have. Well, to do that, we use the periodic table. And I've drawn up the first 20 elements here on the periodic table. Now, in this class, we'll tend to stay within these first 20 elements because we deal with uh, life, and life tends to have basically four uh, atoms or elements that they interact with the most, which is carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, uh, and hydrogen. And so with those four, you get up about 90% of what makes up the, the living things. And so we tend to stay in just those first 20. So with that, we're going to use the periodic table to determine the number of valence electrons. Now, I look at the periodic table, and I look at it from in rows. So this would be the first row here. And if you look, it only has two elements in that row. And so I say that it can, this row can hold two. Okay? The next one, starting with lithium, we're going to neon, that actually holds eight, so you can count it out. Lithium one, beryllium two, boron three, uh, carbon four, nitrogen five, oxygen six, chlorine seven and then neon eight. So we can have eight. There's eight across there. Okay. And the last one also can have eight. Now why those numbers are important is it tells you how many electrons can be held in what you think of as an energy shell. When we draw electrons, when we draw atoms, we tend to draw them with electrons in energy shells. Or orbitals. Now we know that that's not what they look like, right? They're actually in a probability cloud and they're flying around and they could be a circular shape or maybe a dumbbell type shapes. So we know they're in different shapes, but for simplicity's sake, we kind of organize them based on these, this planetary model, okay? So looking at the first one, helium, helium has an atomic number of one, and by the way, we have actually put these according to their atomic number. So you can go across and see helium has one, or sorry, hydrogen has one, helium has two. If I said this was helium, this is hydrogen. Helium has two. Well, then you go back over here to this row. Lithium, three. Beryllium, four. Boron, five. Carbon, six. Nitrogen, seven. Oxygen, eight. Fluorine, nine. Neon, 10. So that's their atomic numbers. And you've learned in earlier videos that the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. And that all of these are neutral, so it's therefore also equal to the number of electrons. So when I say uh, hydrogen has an atomic number of one, what I'm also saying is that it has one electron. And I can put that one electron right there. And since it only has one, when we draw the electrons, we represent them by dots. Okay, in the Lewis dot diagram, each electron is going to be a dot. So then, we're going to look over here, and we're going to go to the next one, which is helium. We said the atomic number for helium was two. So helium uh, is going to have two electrons. Now, those two electrons then would constitute a full outer shell. In the first shell, 
but the first orbital, it can have two. Well, how do I know that? Well, I know that because these atoms or these elements are arranged based on their properties. And we find that helium behaves like neon. And lithium and hydrogen behave alike. And so because of that, we know that in that first orbital then, that it can hold two. So then we're gonna go back here to lithium. Now with lithium, it has three. It's actually the third one. So one, two, three, lithium. So we would have three electrons. Now, when you do the Lewis dot though, when you do the Lewis dot, you don't draw those inner electrons. Those inner electrons aren't used in bonding. We know they're there, so lithium does have three. It's got two inner electrons. We know they're there, but we don't draw them whenever we're dealing with bonding, or we're doing Lewis dot. Since they're not dealing, they're dealing with bonding, they're there, but they're uh, not really reactive, we don't draw them. So lithium has two. Beryllium, right next to lithium. It would have four total, two in the first shell, one, two, that's full. Are we going to draw that? No. And then one, two, it's got two more. And so when you do a Lewis dot, I typically start this at the top. It doesn't necessarily have to be at the top, but typically you would start at the top here, and I go all around clockwise. So there we go. It's got two dots because it has two valence electrons. Now, we're going to go here to uh, beryllium here. Beryllium has five electrons total. It's the fifth element. One, two, three, four, five. It's the fifth element across. And uh, it's going to, the two in the first, one, two. So it's got three left over. Now, if you're wondering, I mean, do I always have to take those two off or how? Yeah, you do, but there's actually a quick way of doing it. If you start over here and count in the, its row, what, what, what number it is in its row, that actually tells you its valence electrons. So lithium, it's in the first one in its row, so it's got one. Beryllium, it's the second one in its row, it's got two valence electrons. And then lastly, uh, boron here, it's the third one in the row, it's got three. Right next to boron would be carbon. And you guessed it. It's got four. I'm gonna actually go against that. I normally draw it and put it on this other side here so they don't confuse me. It's got so carbon's got four. Okay. Neon has five. Now with neon having five, I'm gonna go around clockwise starting at the top. Once again, you don't have to start at the top, it's my preference. Going around, adding one to each side, and that's four, and then I go back up here to the top for five. You can count nitrogen across, one, two, three, four, five, it's the fifth one. It's got seven total electrons, it's atomic number seven, so it's got seven protons and seven electrons. The first two would fill up the first orbital, but with when we're doing the Lewis dot, we're only looking at valence electrons. So we're not going to show the inner ones. So oxygen would be, it's got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. It would have six dots around it. Okay? So, starting at the top, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's got six dots going around that, right? Looking at its valence electrons. It had eight total electrons, that two in the first shell, right? But it's full, and when you do the Lewis dot, you're only drawing the valence electrons, okay? So, uh, I'm going to drop down here. I'm not going to do those last ones because I'm running out of room there. So I'm going to drop down here and do uh, sodium. Sodium has 11. 
So how many does it have in the first shell? One, two. How many does it have in the second shell? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that full? Yeah. So here's sodium. It's in the third row. It's got, it's in the first column. So it's valence electrons. There's one. The valence electrons are those outer electrons. How about magnesium? Two. Potassium, right below sodium. So, it's the first spot, it's got one. Calcium, it's got two. So, the number it is going across tells you the number of valence electrons. So if you start on the first one, it can count over, that tells you the valence electron number, okay? The atomic number tells you the total number of electrons. Now you're gonna find that valence electrons are important when it comes to bonding. Because atoms all want to be more stable. They want to get more stable. And to get more stable, they need to have full outer shells. Okay? And so with that, uh, they either have to gain or lose electrons or share electrons to become more stable. And that gets us into the bonding. So just to recap before we uh, leave, uh, valence electrons are your outer electrons, so the ones that are do with, deal with bonding, right? Now, you, the, other, the atoms have inner electrons, but they're not dealing with bonding. And then uh, you determine how many valence electrons an atom has by basically starting over here at the, at the start of the first column here and then counting that row over until you get to the atom. Okay, so fluorine. I want to give you a second to, uh, to kind of count over fluorine and how many valence electrons does fluorine have. Fluorine is F and it's in the second row. So it's located right here. So hopefully you counted over and you said that fluorine will have seven. So if you were to draw fluorine over here, Starting at the top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Fluorine has seven. All right. Well, that brings us to the end on uh, how to use the periodic table to uh, determine the valence electrons. And if you have any questions, please let me know.